Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse. And as always, we're wishing you the best. We're here for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. And today, we are so happy to have as our guest, Dr. Emil de Tafel. Dr. de Tafel earned a BS in engineering chemistry from SUNY at Stony Brook, right here on our, one of our local sister schools, and also a doctorate of dental surgery. Uh, so he is both a dentist and an engineer, very impressive. And then Dr. De Toffel decided to apply his engineering and health science background to help the growing population of individuals concerned about the adverse effects of electromagnetic field radiation. Uh, he also no stated that in the last generation, man-made electromagnetic field pollution of our environment has escalated to the point where effects on our delicate biological systems are a certainty. This has been well documented in the scientific literature, but not well publicized. So Dr. Emil created a company to, uh, for people to investigate safe EMF products, products that actually ways that you can deflect those electromagnetic fields from yourself and your loved ones. So on our archive, on our show archive, we will have a link so you can find out more. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Emil. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you know, it's pretty stunning because it seems like many people sometimes feel like they're ill and they never even think about the fact that it might be an electromagnetic field sensitivity, and certainly their doctor does not suggest that either. Yeah, that's right. We hear that a lot from our customers who call. I mean, you know, unfortunately, our, our environment is so toxic that it could be pesticides and food additives and <laughs> viruses from all parts of the world. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why someone might not feel well. It doesn't surprise me that EMF doesn't come to their mind first. Yes, that's true. Um, you know, it's the last thing. So sometimes people don't feel well. They go to their doctor. They get tested. They cannot find a specific reason. They don't have high blood pressure. They don't have any disease that's going to show up in the blood. And this is never even suggested. And truthfully, Dr. Emil, is there a test to determine electromagnetic sensitivity? Not specific for electromagnetic sensitivity, uh, not a, a lab test that I'm aware of. There are some lab tests that have been done, and I'm sure that they will be coming because the uh, biochemical mechanism by which electromagnetic fields alter the cell membrane are now well understood. Dr. Martin Paul has done extensive work in this, uh, understanding how the EMFs affect the calcium channels and the way the cell membrane controls the influx of calcium. Um, and so no doubt, uh, t diagnostic tests will be coming in the future, but to my knowledge, they're not here yet. Right. And so also, you know, of course, it's often not even suggested. So people aren't even aware that perhaps there's an explanation um, for their issue, for their health issue. Right. So that that's where the that's where we're really falling down because while it may be an EMF issue that someone's not feeling well or it may not, it's certainly something that should be explored as well as uh, other factors, their diet and their stress level and, and so on and so on. But uh, it, at least it's something that should be considered. And as a diagnostic test, it's really super simple to diagnose it in this way. If the person can temporarily remove themselves from electromagnetic exposure, take a, a weekend at a camp or go to the beach or go on a vacation somewhere where they're away from man-made electromagnetic fields for a couple of days and see if they feel better. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And then when they return is mostly when it's noticed, 
right? They return to their home environment, to their work environment, and that's when they notice, wow, I feel lousy all of a sudden. I didn't notice that I was starting to feel better uh, on the short holiday that I took because um, it takes some time for those uh, 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 health effects to wane away, right? So it doesn't happen all at once. But when they come back to the toxic environment, they are hit with it all of a sudden, and they feel the return of the symptoms uh, pretty dramatically. This has been the experience that our people have told us over and over and over. Um, and so it's, it's not um, something that I just made up or something that's uh, just theoretical. Uh, it's, been, it's been demonstrated over and over, at least to me, from where we sit, because we talk to people from all over the world all day long, who have had this experience or similar. Yes, that's so true. I know personally, I visited a friend not that long ago, and she lives outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico, way up in the mountains. And it was actually amazing the difference. That, In fact, it was like a little frustrating because you could not get a cell phone signal, yet there is a clarity of mind, you know, and, and of course you can chalk it up to, oh, well, I'm on vacation. So that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Sure. But the, and that's right. There could be other factors. Your house could have mold or it could have pesticides or it could have some other uh, toxic chemical, formaldehyde or who knows what going on. So even that simple experiment is not conclusive that it's an EMF issue but it sure can lead you down that path of exploring your home or work environment for toxins that are causing you to not feel well. That's true. And by true. the way, to diagnose your home for EMF is not that difficult to do. You would need a meter to do it, um, and they're readily available, and they're not that expensive, and they're totally easy to use. And you simply go around your home with the meter looking to see, do I have hot spots? electromagnetic hotspots in my home. And if so, where are they? Is there one in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the living room? Where are they? What kind of EMF is it? Is it a magnetic field? Let's say there's wiring in the wall or you're sitting right next to or on the opposite side of the wall from your refrigerator motor. Is it an electric field where you're sitting underneath of a high-voltage source like a fluorescent light, for example? Or is it a radio frequency field, uh, so oh, like a, a wireless signal, and a Wi-Fi or cell phone or cordless phone that's pumping out this wireless radiation at you? So starting with a diagnosis to determine, do I have high levels of EMF? If so, what kind? And then where is it coming from? Is it coming from the toaster? Is it coming from the dishwasher? Is it coming from my alarm clock, etc.? And with that information, then, you can begin to think about what to do about it. I know we touched last week on a couple of strategies. There's the strategy of distance, you know, increasing the distance between the people and the source of radiation. Just like with a candle, the closer you get to it, the hotter the flame is. And it's the same with EMF. The closer you get to the source, the more intense the radiation. And conversely, the further away from it you get, the lower it is. So anytime you can increase your distance, that's a good strategy. Strategy number right. two is to turn off the source, whether permanently turn it off, unplug it, throw it out, or put it on a timer so that it's off when the people are likely to be near it. Like a modem, for example, could be put on a timer so that at night when everyone's sleeping, the thing is off. Uh, it could be put on a switch so that you can be switched on and off when needed. Um, so t turning the thing off, turning off the source is a great strategy. And then the third strategy, of course, is to use shielding, whether you put shielding on the source to block the radiation or you put the shielding on or near the people to protect them from radiation coming in their general direction. So fundamentally, it's not that hard to do. It's just something that needs to be done, and for the most part, you're on your own to do it. Uh, there are some consultants around the country. There's a handful of them that will come to your home, so if that's uh, an interest to you, uh, you can get in touch with us, and we can maintain a list of those folks, and we'd be happy to direct you. Uh, that will come for a fee. They'll come to your home, help you diagnose the situation, and, uh, if necessary, help you to take steps to reduce it. 
Fiduciary. Well, Dr. Emil, I'd like to remind our listeners that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and my guest today is Dr. Emil de Toffel, and we're talking about electromagnetic fields, um, what they might be involved with in your life, how you can measure them, and how you can protect yourself. And after today's show, we will have an archive of today's show with a link, a special link that can get you to um, some of the safety information that we'll be talking about here on today's show. So Dr. Emil, that's a great idea. You know, I've been aware of these for so long because when they started to put up inside malls, uh, those of us who are here locally, the first one around was Roosevelt Field Mall, and then they did one in Hicksville which is they're both still there, when they first put those up and they did not have anywhere near the electromagnetic pollution that we have now, I actually felt very uncomfortable when I walked in there. Later, when I had children, and my kids are in their 40s, so it's a long time ago, I actually bought one of those meters so I could measure my house. And my poor kids, I actually did the TV in those days. There were no computers in your house, right? There really were, sure, believe not it or back not. Then, no. You remember. So I actually did the TV with the meter and, and put tape on the floor so the children did not sit any closer closer to that. And I showed them on the meter. That meter is great because it makes it very real to people. Yes, that's absolutely genius. And you were way ahead of the curve to be doing that some 40 years ago, uh, which is really great. I want to stress to the listeners that there are some symptoms that are typical of EMF exposure, and, and we can go over those. But I want to also stress that you may not have symptoms, at least initially or at least for the first few years even, but that with increased exposure and increased cell damage, you are likely to develop symptoms. And once you, it seems that once you cross that threshold from not being symptomatic to being symptomatic, it's a one-way street. It's very hard to go back to uh, not being symptomatic. So the, the benefit of having a meter even if you don't have symptoms, even if you don't feel sick in your environment, is key to reducing your exposure and preventing uh, a one-way trip into being unable to live in an electromagnetic environment. Yeah, and, and even knowing that that might be a problem with all the new things like 5G is coming down the pike now. What is that going to do? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. What is it that's coming down the pike? Okay, so I was talking about 5G. 5G. 5G yes. is, yes, is coming. And it's higher frequency radio waves than what we're currently experiencing with our cell phone and Wi-Fi communications and microwave ovens, which, by the way, are all in the same frequency range. That radiation that's cooking the food in your microwave oven is the same radiation that's coming out of your cell phone and your Wi-Fi router. With 5G, uh, that, that frequency band is getting crowded, right, because there's all sorts of devices operating in that, as I mentioned, ovens and phones and Wi-Fi, drones and uh, uh, key fobs that control your car, police and fire communications, airline communications, and so on. That band is getting so crowded that it's hard to uh, add more to it. So what the FCC and its infinite wisdom has done is open up higher frequency bands for industry to use. There's some advantages and some ad disadvantages to using the higher frequency. An advantage, of course, is that it, it's wide open. It's not being used, really. The second advantage is that you can send more data faster. The disadvantage, especially as you get higher up in, in frequency range, is that it doesn't travel as far and doesn't penetrate through buildings as easily. So what that means is that you need more antennas. You need antennas almost in every room of every building, in every elevator shaft and subway car. You need t antennas everywhere. And so the blanketing of the environment with this 5G radiation is going to become uh, essentially total. Uh, so we're going to have this Wi-Fi radiation everywhere. Add to that, there has been little or no study on the biological effects of these higher frequencies. So to my knowledge, at least, 
And so this is a giant experiment on the American public and uh, essentially on the world population, not only of people, but of bees and plants and animals and all living creatures are going to be exposed to this 